Today I'm going to teach you how to properly hem denim. So these could be regular jeans that you have that are just too long for you, or in my case today, I'm going to hem my skinny full length jeans into ankle capri length. The technique is the same. You will want a few pieces of equipment, so things that you want to have handy are scissors or shears to cut your jeans off, a chalk or sort of marking uh, device, a measuring tape or ruler to make sure they're the same length, and it is very handy to have denim weight needle in your sewing machine with denim thread for a more professional finish. So let's get started. Your first step in hemming your denim pants is to cuff up the amount you would like to shorten. So I've gone ahead and tried these on, cuffed up my hem to a more ankle length, and now I'm gonna take my ruler or tape measure and measure the total amount that I turned up. So I have two and a half inches flipped up for my desired hem. And so that's not where I'm gonna cut it at. I have to be able to flip it up and have a denim hem. So I'm gonna need an additional inch. So if I flipped up two and a half and that's where I want the finished edge to fit on my ankle, I'm only gonna cut off one and a half inches. So whatever your amount is, subtract one inch so that we have room to do a double hem like this. So I've marked one and a half inches from my finished edge. Again, I wanted to hem my pants a total of two and a half inches, but this will allow us the one inch to flip up and finish off the bottom of our pant. So I'm gonna go ahead, making sure I'm on a flat surface and my pants are nice and flat. I'm gonna cut along my chalk line. and cut off the part that I don't want on my jeans. I'm gonna go ahead and do this to my second pair. Now I'm gonna turn my jeans inside out. It makes it easier to hem up. I'm gonna take my seam gauge, or if you have your tape measure, and I'm gonna measure up one inch to the inside of my jeans. I always start on my side seams to make sure they match, and then I flip it to this side seam to ensure that it also matches. It keeps your hem length more smoothly once sewn. And so once I do that, I'm gonna just put a pin in the middle just to make sure it's a uniform length. And then I'm gonna give this a press. So I measure once at the one inch, although this isn't how wide our actual hem's gonna stay. And now I'm gonna press it and do the same to the other leg. So I pressed up one inch all the way along the bottom edge of my pant leg. I've just removed my pins because I have a crease line now from the iron where I'm gonna take my raw edge and I'm gonna turn it up to that crease line and then repin it so that it has that nice double fold that a denim pair of pants has. And that way you only have to measure the once and use that crease as a little guide um, to help make it all even. So again, I'm just taking my raw edge and I'm turning it to the crease. So it's about a half inch wide and then folding it back up along that pressed edge that we had originally pressed it up and pinning it in place. I will give it another press to hold both uh, hem lines and folds in place so it's nice and smooth for our top stitch. So go ahead and do your double hem right now. When you're ready to actually machine stitch your hem, you wanna make sure that your sewing machine has a denim needle in it. So this is a size um, 18 uh, machine needle. It's a bit wider, you'll see it's thicker with a, a larger eye to it so that it can um, accommodate a, the bulk of a denim fabric and a denim uh, weight to thread as well. So I have it on a straight stitch. I am going to up my stitch length a little bit. On a top stitch I want it a bit longer so it shows on the surface. So I'm just over a three and I can play with my needle position now and the reason I might and that's how I'm, I'm with my width I'm actually moving my needle on a straight stitch is because when I line up my pant I'm going to put it around my machine. I'm not going to actually stitch it this way. I'm going to stitch it from the top but I want to find out my guide where I can stitch nice and close to this top fold. 
So I think if I put it along the 4 8 line, and then I can move my needle just a little bit, I'm going to just landmark, yeah, right where my needle will hit close to the top of the fold so it won't uh, fold back down. So I like that. Again, I'm following my 4 8 line, and I've moved my needle slightly left, so it's sitting at about a 4 right now. That is all dependent on how your width of your hem was pressed and how wide it actually is. So I'm going to go ahead and start on this. I'm going to start on my inside leg, but I'm not going to put it in this way. I'm actually going to flip my jeans right side out again, and I'm going to top stitch them with the good side up. It does a nicer top stitch when you do it this way. So I'm going to find my inside leg, because the back stitch is always... Um, a little bulkier so you want to find the least noticeable spot. I'm going to just take out my first pin there and I'm going to line it up against my 4 8 drop my foot and I'm going to sew my hem in place with the good side up just like this all the way around. So there's one leg finished all the way around. It's a nice length. If you compare it to the length on your actual jean it's a little bit larger. And then on this side, it's been stitched close to the edge of the fold. So go ahead and do that on your second leg and then give it a final press at the very end to make sure it lays nice and smooth. So there you have it. These were once my full length skinny jeans cropped into ankle length using the hemming technique I showed you today. It's pretty simple. So please like my videos, subscribe, so I can show you some more easy to do yourself videos and techniques. Thank you for watching.